Hey everyone, I'm getting ready to make some hanging kitchen towels. I don't know what the name of these are, but what you're going to need is a pot holder and a kitchen towel and a button and thread, obviously. Um, this whole YouTube thing of having to mark things, are they for kids? No, this video is not intended for kids because there's going to be scissors and a sewing machine and needle and thread used. Um, you know, it's meant for an adult. But I feel weird marking it that way because the video is not unsuitable for a child. You know, it's not nudity or vulgarity. I don't believe, unless I catch my finger in the needle, that <laughs> a child couldn't watch it. So I really don't know how to mark these videos. I, I certainly don't want a $40,000 fine because a video wasn't marked correctly. So I'm just going to put out there that this is a instructional video of how I do something you may do it differently you may not agree with the way that i do it which is fine but i think these are easy to do and they're fun to make they make great gifts so i just want to share that with you as far as a child doing it no i mean i'm thinking of a child is under the age of 10 and shouldn't be messing around with the sewing machine so i don't know okay so when you unfold the towel, you'll see that you have this natural crease going down it. First thing you're gonna do is set your sewing machine to the widest stitch that you can. Mine goes to five. Um, yeah. We're just gonna use a straight stitch and we're just gonna go straight down the middle right where that seam is. Sorry that the camera has to be on the table that the sewing machine is on, so it's going to wobble. And I apologize. Hopefully it's not too terribly bad. But we're just going to run this through. Follow your little crease line. And that's just showing you where your middle is. Okay. So now that you have that, you can see it's already kind of did it where you're getting the pucker. And what you're going to do is get a hold of your, I can get a hold of it, get a hold of my string here. Not both of them, just one of them. Oh my goodness. Let's get them separated. Now, where are you at? I don't want where the knot is. Okay. And you see how, pull easy, because you can pull too hard and you'll break it. And you can just kind of pull it down. And you see we're creating this pleating pattern. So what you want to do is you want to get that, the width of this. Which I'm trying to show you, and I don't have a lot of room. I'm just going to come under here. Yeah. Okay. You're going to turn it with the picture facing you. And then you want the picture of the pot holder facing down. Look and get your edges lined up. You've had it kind of puckered in there. And you want your middle to middle. So if you need to, you can fold the pot holder in half and just place that, you know, right on top of where your seam is. And if you want to be very precise, grab you a couple stick pens. just to mark that middle and make sure you stay straight. So you probably really only need the edges because it's not that far. And you don't want the pot hold, I mean the kitchen towel to go past the pot holder. 
that won't look right. You want it inside there. Okay. I'm just following that edge, seam to seam. Got two little pins there. Okay. So there you can see I have my two pins on the edge and underneath. So now all you're going to do is now re-sew, but now you want to make your stitches back down small. Um, okay. Normal stitches fine. Alright, so I'm just going to line up that first pin. And we're going to go straight across to, let me show you, straight across to this other pin. And like I said, make sure that your towel doesn't go past the pot holder. I actually like it when I kind of curl the ends under, which I don't think this one is. No. I just think it looks better when you get done, if it's kind of tucked underneath. This one, I don't know. Being a butt, it doesn't want to tuck. There we go. <clears throat> Sorry, I just seen it move. <clears throat> okay, here we go. If this isn't completely perfect, we'll see what happens here. Okay. Oh my goodness. All right, we lost the thread. Right. No biggie. We just need to re-thread here. This is the new sewing machine I showed a box opening to the other day. And what is really cool is in that video I talked about another sewing machine that I really liked that they discontinued. Well, I found someone on Facebook who has that sewing machine, never used it, brand new in the box, and I have ordered it. So when it comes in, I'm gonna actually show the video of that to show you what I was talking about. Okay. Sorry, I know the camera's shaking, I'm trying to go slow so it's not terrible terrible but it's pretty terrible isn't it okay so we're getting to this edge so I'm gonna take this pin out of the way Smack edge I'm just gonna do a couple little back stitches just to hold it in place there and voila. Get rid of some of these extra strings we don't need on the ends. All right, so this is what you have. Isn't that cool? We back it up so you can really see. I love this so much. Okay, so now you're almost done. The next step is to put a button. You have this great hook here, so the button's gonna this hook is going to come over and fit on the button. Yeah. And then that's how you're going to be able to hang it to stuff. So I already have thread and a needle. I'm going to take a button. And you're just going to put that button right underneath where that seam comes across. Right in the middle. And you're just going to sew it on like you would a normal button. Start with the back so your knots in the back. I love how fast these are to make. And you can do them for any season. And it's like very inexpensive. You can go to the Dollar Tree, you know, Walmart 
and buy these kitchen towels and pot holders. The thing you want to try to remember is if you get the pot holder, sometimes the matchy matchy doesn't look good because you have to remember that your picture on the pot holder is going to be cut in half. So you want to always fold them over and see how it looks because you may actually do better with a plain color or something. I've noticed that, especially if there's words on there, because the words are going to get cut off. And it just doesn't look as good. You know, keep your words down on the kitchen towel part, and then just have a coordinating color or design for the top, which is the way that this pot holder is. Uh, I'm missing the hole here. And you just want this button to be on there pretty good. I do use these for decorations, but I also do use them. Like, I'm always wiping my hands on them. You can wash these just like anything else. Or you can just use them for decoration, however you want to do. But I just think these look so much cuter than just having the towel. Okay, so we're going to come up in behind the button, do a couple circles, just to get it in there good. I don't have a cushion thing like I need. I'm just going to knot it so it does not go anywhere. Cut the excessive string off. And you can cut this tag off or rip it off. Don't need that. Okay, so there you have the inside. There's your button. Stop moving. <laughs> and then all you're going to do is you take this and it goes over like that. And look at that. It's like 12 minutes and we just created this. This is how fast we did this. Move out so you can actually see it. How cute is this? This one's really cute. This one has the deer. I got this at Walmart, the material and stuff. The other one that I'm getting ready to do is this one. And they didn't have the camper for the top but they had the truck and it had this black and red design on it so I was like oh well that kind of matches and then when you fold it in half you have the house on the top and you have the truck but notice the truck is upside down so I actually think I would have this part facing out and it's going to look like this so since that only took a few minutes let's go ahead and do this one same thing. You don't want to wash these first because you want to have your seam already on there. Now, if you have washed it, obviously you just fold it in half. Find your middle. Alright, so we're going to have your stitch as wide as possible. Cover up these stick pens before I have 200 of them flying everywhere. You're going to go straight down the middle, following your seam. Sorry that the camera's going to bounce. Alright. You can see it automatically kind of puckers it up. You're going to come to your edge. Release that knot that you created at the end of your stitch. kind of hard to see because it's white on white. Okay, that way you've got one of the strings. Don't use both or you're not going to get nowhere. And you're just going to gently tug it tight and you can kind of pull this down to create your ruffle. And you want to get it the width of your pop holder.
and kind of just space it out so it's not all bunched up in one little spot. We want it to kind of be uniform. This one's tight. Need to go down very easily. There we go. Okay, that's about right. And just a little bit more. There we go. Okay. All right, so remember you want your picture side facing up. Hold your pot holder in half so you can find your middle. And you're gonna have it facing down. So it's gonna be picture to picture. Tuck your edges in behind. I just think it looks better in the end. Find your edge. And we're just going to pin it. Sit on this side. I'm going to curl the edge over. And we're going to pin it. Okay, there you go. Now, we're gonna just run down the middle. Here you wanna get your um, stitch back to normal. All right. Now this, because it's darker, I probably should have used black thread, but we're just gonna use the white. It's gonna be okay. Went too fast. Four down. You see these all the time at craft fairs. Sometimes they are crocheted at the top and I don't know. I think they're usually, some of them are up to like $10. And I'm like, wow, I could make this. Could make this easy. All right. And there it is. See how easy this is? This is so crazy easy. And then there's the other side. Like I said, you got the truck upside down. So I don't know I'd put this out front. I would have it facing this way. Do you have the camper? Campers are like so popular right now. Alright, I'm gonna have to restring some thread. Mm. I don't know what I did with my thread. Oh, sorry guys. It's crazy, I've lost a whole spool. So all I'm doing now, obviously, is just we're going to thread and put a button on. I do love giving these away as gifts. Some people always seem to really like them. You know, you like to decorate your kitchen up for the different seasons. And it's just so cheap and it's inexpensive but it looks so nice so you want your button right in the middle right underneath that edge start in the back find your hole and then you just 
just crisscross if you don't know how to sew a button. And I have my thread doubled. Some people maybe only use single. But I want this to be really strong in case we're taking it on and off. come up behind the button instead of going through the hole wrap it at least three or four times that just helps lock it in then go back in behind the button and put your knot in that's how I do it you may do it differently but so far that way has worked for me and then I just put some knots in it get rid of the excessive strings. Alright, there you have your button, your loop will come down and around, and there you go. It's going to hang, just like that. How awesome is that? I just love this so much. Okay, guys, I hope that was helpful to some people. I wanted to do it live so there was no stopping and starting. You could follow along with me to do this because I think it is such an easy thing to do. It's a lot like the tag blanket that I made that it was really fast and easy that you could just get the material and just follow along and you'll get it in no time. And let me tell you, these little suckers are addictive. You're going to want to go out and just get a pile of different ones and just sit down and boom these out really quickly because they're so much fun. So let me know what you think and if you want to see more videos like this, let me know. Um, because I did not mark this as kids, you should be able to leave comments. And until next time, guys, bye.